Hey guys, my name is Mike. I'm an author and an illustrator. And if you are interested in my work, there's a link below to my Etsy store and uh, to brushes and stuff like that. But uh, to, this video is going to be about finishing an image. I'm going to show you how to bring, uh, how to put the finishing touches on something and unify all the colors. And there's, I mean, with, with every, with any, uh, whether it's a pinup, a poster, or a, a painting, whatever it is, there's always stuff you can do at the end to make it a little bit better. Now I haven't combined all the layers down uh, because I, I'm, I'm going to make some corrections on the layer level and then I'll make some corrections on the entire piece and we'll try and, and make this thing uh, a little bit more. I mean it's a, it's a dramatic image that's dramatically lit but because I, I kind of did comic book coloring on, on Batman here and then sort of painted the rest of this it doesn't, you, you can tell, it doesn't really mesh super well. And I wasn't, I was more concerned with value, so value being, you know, the, the, the amount of light or dark, uh, than I was with the actual, uh, the, the colors going together. Because there's red, there's purple in the sky, and of course there's yellow. I mean, it's primarily a yellow and blue piece, but there's a bunch of other colors in here, and I'm sure we could find some greens in Batman's reflection. So, we're gonna, we're gonna try and tie these things together. Uh, the first thing I notice is that, uh, Batman, I, I like how he looks, but, uh, he doesn't have enough contrast. The lights aren't quite light enough. The darks aren't quite dark enough. And uh, that's an easy fix. So we will go to our... My flats layer is actually my colors layer. Because I just flatted out the, the pole and, and Batman here. And then I ended up just painting them all as one piece anyways. Because this isn't exactly like a, a comic book page. Um... So what we need to do is, and I'm working in Mega Studio. Um, all of this is exactly the same in Photoshop. There's the same, the same tools. The little menus look basically the same. There are certainly differences between the two softwares, but uh, in this case, it, it's minimal. We're gonna go to Tonal Correction, and then we're just gonna bring up Tone Curve. Now, if we want to make the dark values, and here's so here are all your values. And then you're kind of deciding, uh, this works a little bit like a gradient map. What we can do is if we pull these dark values down, it's going to make all the dark values, all the values below the threshold that we've moved, come down. So if we bring them way down like that, you know, Batman's going to get, going to get super dark. But if we kind of pull them out in this area, and then, I don't like that. You can see there's a little bit more saturation in here than I want. So, because when we brighten up these blues, it starts to become very blue. And uh, a Batman suit usually does have a little bit of blue in it, but we don't want it quite this blue, or I don't want it quite this blue. So we'll just go ahead and, and desaturate that when we're done. But let's get the values kind of where we want. We just want a good contrast. We'll play around with it a little bit. That blue starts to become super blue. See, so now we've made it a little bit more dramatic. But, you can see, that there's just too much saturation in here. So we're going to go up here. We're going to go to Tonal Correction and uh, the Saturation Slider. You can push Control u would do the same thing. I'm just showing you through the menus. So you know what to do. Hue is going to be a global color adjustment. So if we like pull it over here, it'll probably be, yeah. So these are super powerful adjustments. But if you have a print and you want to do alternate colors, sometimes going layer by layer and just changing all the colors that way, you can get a, create a really interesting balance that you might not have been able to do otherwise if you're using gradient maps or something like that. Uh, so we want to pull back the saturation. See, in those little slashes of bright blue, where, if we, here, let's zoom in a little bit. Let's take this out. If you see here, you see down here, that's just too much blue. So, 
Here. And when I do corrections, I try and not zoom in too far like this. Because a lot of this detail, this is only a, this is an 11 by 17 inch piece. And all the little detail in here, and, and sure you can see it, but it's more like a, it's the illusion of detail rather than detail itself. If you zoom in super close, you're going to see like, oh, it's not, it's just a bunch of little lines. Just like the bats aren't, <laughs> many of these bats, like all of this is just a, like a splatter brush um, or a texture brush. And then I drew in a handful of bats and then I, I don't know, and I was copying, pasting. This is something that I really probably, I probably wouldn't do something like this traditionally because it's just super time consuming. And it's way easier to move things around. I mean, I've. Uh, uh, but speaking of traditional, like this is an actual inked piece. Uh, it's a watercolor that I did, but I scanned these inks because I just liked I just liked how he looked. I thought he was pretty gnarly looking, and I thought I might want to make a print out of him. And uh, I was going to record the video for the print for the process, but I started like after <laughs> after Game of Thrones last night. I just sat down for two hours, and then it was already done. So, uh, oh well, but. Uh, I think we can add some more of these detail, maybe in yellow on these bats. We can uh, scribble in a little bit of these lines. I kind of like how this looks here. So maybe on some of these bigger bats, I'll draw in a little bit of yellow lines. And maybe separate out some of these bigger pieces in here. I think that'll look good. Um, see, so even when you're when you're doing a, when you're doing finishing, you're still probably going to be drawing too. But uh, yeah, okay. So I'm happy with uh, with the contrast on on Batman. Now, I don't know, we, we can get an airbrush with a, let's just say th this area down here we want to, to lighten behind them so we could see the cape. Because we can't really see the outline of the cape, which I'm not super unhappy with. But what I'll do is I'll take kind of a slightly lighter gray and then I'll go over here to, uh, this is just here, I should probably have a, a blank sheet of paper so you can see what these um, so you can see what what brushes I'm going to use and just give an idea this is just a I call it punk rock poster like it just looks like a rock and roll poster to me I use it for all kinds of stuff it doesn't make great clouds but you can bring the opacity down maybe in the 30s and then we'll just Do that. Now I'm doing this on top of the, the the background color layer. So now we can see a little bit of separation and then maybe I think we want to actually go black here. Just give this a little bit more shape. You know, I don't know if this is supposed to be the bat signal. I had at a certain point I had like the the yellow coming down and buildings in the background and whatnot, but I thought it just it looked more compelling if it was just all made out of bats. And so, what problems do we see? There's too much blue here. It's kind of purple. This really should be. Red. All right. Well, this is a super light color, so we've got we've got huge amounts of contrast here. Let's see what happens when we when we edit this layer. I'm gonna do it tonal correction and we'll do a tone curve. Now these changes are going to be a lot more subtle than on Batman. But we want to keep Batman in the forefront. We're trying to push the push the background into the background if you know what I mean. See if we if we make it too dark, you can't see the bats anymore. 
Maybe we just need to bring up the brights and leave the darks where they are. So there's not very much bright in here. So see, you can see most of our values down here. There's very few. So when we move this, we're really just going to see a change here and maybe a little bit in the tops of the clouds. Depends on how bright we want that, that yellow up there. And you can see in here, pull these mids down just a little. Nah. Ooh, that actually, yeah, that actually looks better. If we desaturate that, I think that'll be better. Okay, so now I'm going to hit Control U and just take some of the saturation out of this. Usually if I'm doing a watercolor or working traditionally and you want to desaturate, what I do is I like to mix a little bit of black gouache with ink and get a brush super, super wet and just touch a little bit of it and kind of glaze over. It's a good way to, to desaturate. Although if you're watching this, maybe you just work digitally. But uh, I prefer the traditional art. Most of my art is at the very least hybrid, meaning it starts with a drawing. And, uh, yeah. All right. So we took all that saturation out, but we lost the, the yellow on the edges. And I am just going to take a soft airbrush, a regular old airbrush, with a, a fairly low density or a low hardness in Photoshop. And I'm going to put some of the saturated yellow back in the edges, just so this thing has some shape because it's the bats are actually darker if you see how they're kind of pushed back these are all grays I took like a pencil and washed these all back uh, as a color hold so I was actually coloring the, the inks because once upon a time this was all just black and white um, you know it doesn't look like it but this was very much done as like a normal comic drawing it was produced the same way a, a a comic would be produced. Neat, you know, you start with pencils and then inks, but it just doesn't look like it. It looks like some sort of digital thing. Now, I like all the texture in the edges here, but this texture is sort of distracting. Um, I like a little bit of that texture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my I'm going to take my oil blender and I'm gonna kind of rub some of this out so that we can see Batman a little bit better. So that... Okay. And that way we'll draw our eye to all this texture. And see and this kind of appears like a cloud, like they're coming through the cloud, which helps, you know, make it seem like these bats back here are much further away and there are smaller particles and then the particles get bigger. And we're just trying to draw the eye. And this is sort of a Fibonacci spiral, but not really. I tried to do it as a golden spiral. So I watched some sort of strange documentary about these scientists that are uh, reducing the very fabric of reality and there's all these golden ratio things so and i don't use i don't purposely use the golden ratio in art very often so um, and i've been dabbling with like recursive stuff and you know branch out man so i'm just again i'm just uh removing some of this texture so that our eye goes where it's supposed to. I think that when we talk about eye leading, like bam, you're looking at Batman, and then you see his arm, and that brings you right here, and this brings you around here, and that's, that's where my eye goes, I don't know. All right, that looks pretty good to me. Now, what I'm gonna do is create a new layer on top of all of this. 
and I am going to fill it with a solid color. A bit of a desaturated blue here. I'm going to fill it. So now we have this, this layer right here. And now I'm going to adjust the opacity down super low. And I'm just going to see if a solid, a, some solid color, maybe even this. Overlays like this can really unite an image and bring the colors together. I think what we need to do, go back to this color layer, put this over top. It's going to be another interesting one. All right, so I've got another color layer here. What I want is this area to be brighter than this area, but you can't do that globally. You can change the values of any range of values, but I want like a gradient. So what I'm going to do is uh, Oh, wrong way. Yeah, here we go. I'm going to move this just below Batman here. And then take it way. I need to go even further. Not like that. And I'm looking in the corner, I can see exactly what's going on here. All right. That looks pretty cool. Creating a bit of a vignette here. Do the same thing. This. This is just a soft airbrush. All right. Now we can do some global color correction. See if we can't. Not, I don't know if this is going to do anything. I don't have a specific thing that I want to do. Oh, whoops. Just trying to find those right values where Batman, the light parts of Batman pop out, and this pops out, and then you can at least see 
the bats. It's okay if they get lost in here. This is this is fine. Turns gray. Gross. See the difference? See with it off, looks a little gray, a little bit muddy, but watch the clarity that happens in between between Batman and the logo when we do that. The logo pops out a little bit more. I hate that word. Pops is such a stupid word. It's cliche, but what am I supposed to say? Dimensionalizes? <laughs> I don't know. But uh, yeah. I think this is just about done. Maybe we can let's take a super light color and Shelly is a, is my C Tech pen type thing. How big is it's ready to go? Right on top of here. Too, too big. Where the light might be hitting the uh, the bone. Maybe. Mm. I don't think this pen has enough of a size jitter on it. Let's try a G pen. I don't know if these lines will be enough to to even be seen or make a difference. Maybe. See, some of these bats are just kind of scribbles. Thought about drawing in a bunch of detail in there, but it well, I didn't think about it, I actually did it and it just didn't look right. It's kind of illusory detail is more interesting. It kind of looks better if you don't just follow the light. Yeah, some of that separation is is really nice. I don't really want to zoom in and get this too accurate. Like I'm using a big, I'm just dashing at it real lightly. Just create some highlights. Batman might need some highlights. Get that absolute.
All right. I think this thing is done. It's pretty cool. I like it. Uh, probably going to limit it to 25 prints. And they'll be signed and numbered. They'll be pretty cheap. But uh, certainly not the most elaborate thing I've ever done. But uh, it's cool. It's Batman. Uh, yeah, the classic perch pose is something that you know that you, that's an iconic representation of Batman, but it can always be done a different way. Um, and uh, this is my take on it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I've uh, I've taught you something about uh, just some little tricks and techniques. This wasn't it's not really a tutorial by any stretch of the imagination. I was just doing whatever I felt like doing for this particular image. If I if you saw me finish every image, every image would be a little bit different. Um, there's all sorts of tools that you can use and, uh, you know, keep, keep drawing, keep making stuff, keep getting better uh, in the comments. If you have any kind of questions about something I did or something you'd like me to make a video on, I'd be more than happy to do so. Uh, thanks for taking the time to watch this. And if you're interested in the print, there's a link below. All right. I'll see you guys soon.